I'll speak first. CVE, or countering violent extremism, or in the UK, it's preventing violent extremism. The world is a wonderful world. The world is a peaceful world. The world is a violent world. The world's got a lot of different elements to it. Do we need government to like try to make the world more unicorn, rainbows, ice cream? Is that a good expenditure of funds? I don't think so, right? I already you know, spoke about how I don't believe that blocking works. You know, you only can use technology to s solve, like, these, like, CVE and violence is not a technological problem. So when asking the world's best engineers to solve it, they're going to say, hmm, it's going to be hard to come up with a technological solution because, you know, people have extreme views and people have moderate views and people have different views on the different spectrums and how much can we control there? You know, like, w to your point earlier about um, Raqqa, like, the big pushback with Apple against the FBI with decrypting this um, phone in San Bernardino was that, look, we can do this. We can create this back door, but the back door will be open for hacktivists and hackers and other nation states, Russia, China, et cetera. You know, right now, social media companies and people who make encryption tools and circumvention tech are under huge amounts of pressure from the United States government to what are you doing about this violent extremism problem? You know, you, you're not doing enough. Too many groups, too many chatter, too many people, too many members on your, of your product seem to be violent extremists. And I don't know whether like they should be really doing anything because what happens when there's another constituent, maybe China, that has putting a lot of pressure on Facebook or YouTube to create signatures of certain types of videos and pull those down, you know? You can say like a factory farm video looks violent to some people. What happens when the meat industry is like, hey, we're putting pressure on, you know, Twitter to take those down. Like, uh, we have a right in this country to express our views, to assemble, whether that's virtual or in person. And I kind of feel like that's what, that's. So, so, so is this, how is this impacting on that? Is it? Well, I think it's, it's, it's quieting a voice because what it, it has like a chilling effect. When you see that your messaging isn't being used, I mean, at the end of the day, it depends what the metric of success is for countering violent extremism in these platforms. Like, you can't say like, uh, you know, respectfully, like our tweet, tweets are down or, you know, membership is down. Maybe they just went to another website or another platform because the internet is boundless. It has no end. You can try to, bomb someone off the planet, but you can't bomb someone off the internet because there's no end to the internet. So what happens is people just tend to move into different corners and it kind of brings us to a place where we, we become less democratic and I think it's a really dangerous version of the internet. You know, the internet that I love is a, an internet where you could be anonymous and you know, no one knows that you're a dog on the internet. You can say whatever you want on the internet and you can be a troll or you could be someone who changes someone's political viewpoint or you know, galvanizes like positive change in this world. 